During that dreaded appointment, when you find out that you have an autoimmune condition, it is highly likely that your doctor will bring up hydroxychloroquine, otherwise known as Plaquenil. This medication is a staple in rheumatology due to its effectiveness in managing conditions like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and Sjogren's. But in those early days of our diagnosis, we can often be in a haze. We're still grappling with how our worlds have changed and we're not really in a position to ask all the right questions. So today, I'm going to discuss what hydroxychloroquine is and how it works, when and why we use it, and what you can expect from it, both the good and potentially bad effects. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Hydroxychloroquine, otherwise known as its brand name, Plaquenil, has been around for a very long time. It comes from quinine, which is from the bark of the cinchona tree and was initially used to treat malaria since the 1800s. In the 1940s, however, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine were created and soon thereafter were used for autoimmune diseases, despite very poor insight into how they actually worked. Even today, after all these years, we are just now beginning to understand how hydroxychloroquine impacts our immune systems. Research is now revealing that its effects are likely due to a change in how our T cells interact with the rest of our immune system. T cells are a type of white blood cell in our immune system that can be activated when we have an autoimmune condition. By tampering down their activity, it is believed hydroxychloroquine dampens autoimmunity and the subsequent inflammation. But there are still many questions. Is this the only way it impacts the immune system? Hydroxychloroquine is known to impact not just inflammation, but also the cardiovascular system, which we'll discuss later on. So is this done via the same mechanism or something else? And does it work the same in rheumatoid arthritis and lupus? And how does age, ethnicity, or disease severity impact how it works? See, we have so many more questions. As I alluded to in the beginning, it almost doesn't matter which autoimmune condition you have. You may have to face the decision to start hydroxychloroquine. It is considered standard of care and in official treatment guidelines for conditions like lupus, antiphospholipid syndrome, and rheumatoid arthritis, but we will use it for psoriatic arthritis, scleroderma, and even Sjogren's disease. We also commonly turn to it when we find ourselves in the gray zone. We often call these situations undifferentiated connective tissue disease or undifferentiated inflammatory arthritis. In these circumstances, we have to weigh the potential risks of any pharmaceutical therapy with the benefit. Because hydroxychloroquine has such a positive risk-benefit ratio, meaning the potential benefit often outweighs the risk, we will rely on this medication in these types of situations. So what are these magical benefits, Ortiz? Well, first and foremost, it can control the out of control inflammation that comes from autoimmunity. And it does this without suppressing the immune system and putting us at risk for infection. But it does more than that. When we have an autoimmune condition, we always need to think about our inflammation and pain today, but also our health for tomorrow. And you'll hear me say again and again, we've got to pay attention to our heart health. We know that autoimmune disease puts us at greater risk for cardiovascular disease in the future. So we need to do all we can to control all the other risk factors, including cholesterol, our blood sugar, and our weight. Well, hydroxychloroquine reduces that cardiovascular risk, not only by lowering blood sugar and cholesterol and controlling autoimmune inflammation, but also likely via some other mechanism that we have yet to understand. This is why, even if you are doing well on whatever regimen you're on, your doctor may still bring up hydroxychloroquine in an effort to do everything we can to protect your future heart. Hydroxychloroquine is also a safe and effective alternative to controlling conditions like lupus when you're pregnant. Building a family when you have an autoimmune condition can be an emotional topic, and for many years, we only had prednisone to help someone get through a pregnancy safely, which, of course, had its own problems. But we now have many years of data and experience demonstrating hydroxychloroquine is quite effective at keeping lupus at bay during pregnancy. Okay, so you now have the prescription. What can you expect when you start it? Well, the first thing to understand is that hydroxychloroquine does not work fast. 
This isn't like your Tylenol or ibuprofen where you start to feel relief in a couple of hours. It takes a while for the medication to build up in your system to the level that it's going to have an impact, which means it can take three to six months to see its full benefit. The flip side of that is also true, which means that even after you've stopped it, the effects can linger as it takes a while to leave your system. So anytime you are looking in to start it, you must go into it knowing that to truly be able to tell if this is going to help you, you have to commit to three or six months. I've seen so many people abandon their hydroxychloroquine after just one month. We have to put our patient pants on and give it time. So how will you know if it's working? Well, this is where knowing your particular flavor of your condition and paying attention to your symptoms is really important. You do not need to become obsessive about tracking, but look at your symptoms week by week or month by month. So for example, if you were having one hour of morning stiffness every day before starting it now, three months in, how is that morning stiffness? Is it still an hour? Is it still every day? A broad perspective will help you judge whether it's helping. And then of course, there are the potential side effects. No medication is without potential risks and that's just the way it is. But in the world of rheumatology, hydroxychloroquine is considered one of the most low risk options out there. Now, I wanna say a word on the miscommunication I often see in our clinics when we talk about potential drug side effects. Rheumatologists get to care for a wide variety of autoimmune conditions of varying severity. Some people may be quite sick and need to be in the hospital, while others have life-changing but not necessarily life-threatening disease. And then of course there's everything in between. When all day every day, rheumatologists are working with a set of tools that ranges from chemotherapy to NSAIDs, their, or our, sense of risk becomes somewhat warped. Compared to chemotherapy, hydroxychloroquine is very low risk, but compared to never having to take medication and now having to face taking something for at least six months, hydroxychloroquine can seem very scary. So I want to acknowledge that I get that. And even though it's just hydroxychloroquine, you should absolutely take the time you need to feel comfortable with starting it and discuss your hesitations with your doctor. So what are the side effects you need to be aware of? I'll start with the most common but least dangerous, and that is stomach upset. About 10% of those with hydroxychloroquine will have nausea, abdominal pain, or diarrhea. It's not unusual to have a little upset tummy anytime you start a new medication. So if that's all it is, it will often resolve in a few days. But if it's really uncomfortable, then reach out to your doctor. They may have you decrease the dose or based on your situation, stop the medication altogether. It's also known to cause photosensitivity, which can be an issue for those with autoimmunity already. And it can even cause darkening of the skin. When on hydroxychloroquine, make sure to wear your SPF, and if you are noticing significant darkening of your skin, reach out to your doctor. And finally, we have the eye. Even over the course of my career, we have changed our approach to hydroxychloroquine due to a better understanding of how common retina changes actually are and what puts someone at risk. We will now make sure you are taking a dose that is appropriate for your weight, and we will keep track of how long you've been on it. We know that those who are on high doses for a long period of time, and by long, I mean 10 to 25 years, those are the highest risk for developing retinal or eye problems. When you start hydroxychloroquine, you want to get a baseline eye exam. This is going to be a more specialized exam than you would get if you were just getting glasses. The ophthalmologist will do an optical coherence test, or OCT. This is used to view and measure your retina and lets the doctor know if they are starting to see changes from your hydroxychloroquine. Based on your situation, the eye doctor may want to do this test on you every one to three years. Having to start any medication for your autoimmune condition is never anything any of us want to face. But hydroxychloroquine can be a safe and effective option for many and deserves a discussion with your rheumatologist. If you are already on hydroxychloroquine, consider talking with your doctor about if monitoring your drug blood levels are right for you. New research is showing that there may be some benefit in checking blood levels in an attempt to personalize the dose needed for that individual. Whatever you decide, whether hydroxychloroquine is right for you or not, 
You deserve to look into every option and understand the potential risks and benefits. If you want to learn more about lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, two conditions where we use hydroxychloroquine a lot, I'll put some videos in the description, but I recommend starting with this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.